Hi friends! Brittany from the Emporium with kittens again. Um, today we're gonna make the car trash can bag. It is a free pattern from Mormino. It has a Velcro little connector to put it on the head, back of the headrest of a car. I used fabric from Mary Beth Made It. It's currently on pre-order, but not for much longer. The pre-order does end this week. Use waterproof canvas to line it. My little cork name label from Mary Beth Made It. And I also have a cutting portion of the video and I used my pink glitter template from Mary Beth Made It. Uh, you're gonna hear kittens in the video. They're wrestling and fighting. Say hi, Thea. <laughs> Super professional. Hope you don't mind if you do. Just might not be the channel for you because we're adopting two of the kittens officially. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. This is my first little tutorial kind of to like start out. Um, I will be doing the summer project box sew along um, video that will be coming out when the boxes release around the 25th of July. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy it. This is a super quick beginner friendly, domestic friendly, um, quick sew. Um, makes a great gift. I'm really excited. Um, I'm gonna go put it in my car and take pictures. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Um, that all helps me grow my channel. Thank you so much. All right, let's go over the pieces that we're gonna need and the supplies first. Um, so I'm gonna be using some templates I have from Mary Beth Made It. This is the top piece to the car trash can. And then I'm also going to be using my box corner guide. It's hard to see the lines, but um, in person I can see them better. Going to need my main fabric. I have waterproof canvas for my lining, some Velcro for the attachment at the top, and I'm going to be using one of my cork tags from Mary Beth Made It also. Gonna need my rotary cutter, and I am also using a giant square ruler to cut my main piece. So first we'll cut our main squares. I'm gonna set these to the side for now. Okay, and again, this is a free pattern, so I will say the measurements on this one. So for your main pieces, you're gonna need a 15 by 13 inch piece. You're gonna need two of those. You're gonna need it out of your main and your lining. You could also use woven interfacing. I am not going to though. Uh, this is a thicker woven, so it should be okay. I do kind of want to try to place my, let me see. I want at least on the front of it to get one of the animals lined up completely. So if I'm going to have 15 by 13 doesn't look like I can get the bear directly lined up but let's see here I'll drop this down I don't have the largest amount of fabric but we'll see what we can do all right so this should still be somewhat on there good so I'm going to cut these corners first and then I don't know how anyone, everyone else does their squares, but I like to then take it this way. Also, I'm sure it'll be in the intro to this video, but if you hear cats, I have three kittens in my office right now. one of our main pieces. I don't think I have enough this way. I do not. Okay. So I'm gonna have to go up here. Hmm. I wanted to get the buffalo too. I don't really want to cut out of the very middle of my print though. Let's see. 
maybe if we went up here in this corner we could do it. This will be the back. 15 and 13. Mm. That's not going to give me enough to do anything else with it. So we're just going to go over here. Sometimes placing your cut is harder than sewing the bag. Alright, 13 by 15. And then I am going to just line this up again and trim off a little tiny bit here. This is also a very forgiving pattern, so if your cuts are not perfect, it's really not going to hurt anything. Um, sometimes when I make the bags, I do the top in the print. Sometimes I do it in my waterproof canvas. I think I am going to do it in my waterproof canvas so I can make something else with this. Okay, you also need the boxer corners. Uh, with a 2x2 two two box, so right here is that for me. I'm just going to line it up. You use a regular ruler, but this little tool is nice because it has them all on there with no other lines to distract. Just make sure you're using the right lines. <laughs> There's one. Also, this is my first actual tutorial, I guess. <laughs> warming up to the summer project box okay we have these pieces now we just need two lining pieces like this and our two top pieces so roll out my waterproof canvas which hopefully i can get it in camera well enough i have a whole cart sitting over here in the way See if I can make this spot work. Um, I do use a different rotary cutter when I do my waterproof canvas and my lining. Um, not lining. Waterproof canvas and interfacing. I just don't want to mess my good one up. Oh good, this is going to fit. Awesome. Alright, so again we need two of these. And cut this piece. Flip it around. Am I in? Okay. Yep. I'm using a camera mount that I recently got, and I'm not used to the camera being like this. But hopefully it works. Let me know if it did not work for anyone. All right. One piece. Go right up here again. Oh, there's a kitten on me. Say hi, Mochi. <laughs> You're gonna have to go back on the floor, though. Go play with your brother. <laughs> All right. Two. Flip this around. So now we have those two. All right, now we're going to get to the top. And again, this is my template from Mary Beth Made It. I requested it be done in pink glitter. It normally comes in uh, clear. <laughs> oh, excuse me. 
Okay, so when you get to these corners, it is a little bit difficult with the rotary cutter. What I do is I take a pen that's going to show and I kind of just mark those spots. Um, but you'll need two of these. Uh, keep in mind if you use waterproof canvas like I am, it is difficult to turn. Um, I use hemostats to turn stuff and even with them sometimes it is a little bit difficult but it does give a nice like it is sturdy um so then where I made those markings I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut them Oh, there's a cat on my leg. <laughs> Mochi butt. <laughs> All right, there's one. Uh, depending where you're at on your fabric, sometimes I will take and like fit this in like this. Uh, but I've got a spot down here I'm going to cut. But just an idea. Uh, it does work well. Sorry also for the sniffles and sneezing. My allergies are driving me absolutely crazy. Oh, and also make sure you're cutting on the line. This is a very quick make also. Um, cutting it out takes the longest. Oh yeah, I really missed that there. It's okay. All right, we have all of our pieces now. We just need to box the corners on our lining pieces. Uh, you can also, so on on the exterior pieces, I box them separately, but you can line them up right sides together and then box them at the same time. It works well, and then they're completely matched up. As long as you don't slide them apart, which... I did when I lifted that. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Hopefully I didn't do too much out of the camera. I think I might have bumped it too, though. Alright. These little scraps, um, some people and so whatever were talking about what you could do with them. And I know Lauren post the other day that you can use them for like stabilizers for magnets and stuff. So I think I'm going to actually save them this time. All right. We have our two main lining pieces. We have our two main exterior pieces. We have our two top pieces. velcro and if you want it's not necessary a name tag thing uh, I'm gonna take my velcro and I'm going to cut it about three and a half inches I think that seems good you could use snaps you could it's it's really up to you I like using the velcro so you have everything we need to make the bag uh, time to prep it and sew it. I'm going to prep my pieces here at my cutting table real quick before I sew. So I'm going to use my rainbow like hair sewing clips. I got them from Lauren at More Me Know. Uh, I love my glitter clips, but sometimes with pieces like these, I just go with this. So you're going to line up your top 
braid sides together and just clip it as much as your heart desires. You're going to leave the bottom end open. We're not going to be sewing this. You can put a clip there if you want. Um, if you feel like it'll help you keep it together, go for it. I probably don't need this many clips, but never hurt anyone. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna take our main exterior pieces, pop them right sides together. You probably should have ironed this. Um, but that's okay. And then same thing, except we will be leaving the top open. And line them up. And the top is the side that does not have the squares cut out. Okay. And then our main lining pieces, same thing. Leave the top open. We won't be sewing there. And just clip together. Sorry about the squeaks too. My table squeaks whenever I lean on it and I have to lean on it to reach. <laughs> All right, time to sew. We're going to take these three pieces over to the sewing machine. Um, I probably should have stitched this on somewhere first. I'm thinking I might want to put it right here. So uh, when we get over to the sewing machine, I will stitch this on right here first and then I'll clip that back together. All right, time to sew. Like I said, I'm using my new camera mount. I really hope that um, this angle is good for everyone. I think it's going to be, but um, I've been wrong one or two times before. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to put my name plate on here first. It's gonna be a little bit harder because I already clipped all of this, but let me see here. So um, it is good to have some center snips on these um, pieces. So we'll do that as we go, but I'm going to take my center snip. Oh my gosh, if I can pick something up. All right. Uh, put a tiny bit of double-sided tape on this just to keep it in place. I just started using these. I'm not the greatest at sewing them on. I'm so used to just slapping my metal tags on but I do enjoy these so let's see I think so we're gonna have our seam allowances I think this looks good hopefully I'm gonna go for it all right and then I'm setting my stitch length to four when I do these um if anyone has a different suggestion for that that comes out well each time please let me know um, I'm also not back stitching. I've been pulling my threads to the back and tying them off when I do these just so it looks a little bit better. to pull this one through before I maybe uh, what did I do <laughs> oh we got it <laughs> like I said I am new to this part of it oh I think I got it to match up perfectly though that is a first all right and then Get this pulled through. 
There we go. And then just knot these. Also, um, I'll be posting this video on my share day for this round. Um, this main, ooh, caught that on fire. Main fabric I'm using is on pre-order for Mary Beth Mead right now. So there is my tag on there. I don't think it looks bad, but <laughs> if you do, um, please don't tell me. <laughs> Okay, so seam allowance in this pattern, I believe, is actually one fourth of an inch, but it doesn't completely matter as long as you're consistent. If you use the same seam allowance for the whole pattern, you will be good again, and it is very forgiving. So we are going to take our top piece, we're going to sew all the way around, but we're going to leave this bottom part open. I still have my stitch length out of four. Um, probably going to leave it there until the top fits. And the kittens are wrestling, so I apologize. We have two eight-week-old kittens we were fostering, and Mochi keeps beating up his brother, Donut. <laughs> I can't walk them out of my office because this is their area. They are locked away from the rest of the house. When you pivot on your corners, you want your needle to be coming back up before you turn and start again. Just backstitched there because I kind of had the needle out of the fabric, but that's okay. All right, snip our threads, and then before we turn this right sides out, we're going to snip the cord. Mochi, be nice to your brother. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, and then on these inside corners, you're going to want to snip in without cutting your stitches or going past them. Well, I guess if you went past them, you would cut your stitches, but don't do it. Okay, like I said, I use hemostats to turn these. It is still a little bit of a chore. I know some people um, heat up the lining or you can do it with vinyl too um, with like a hair dryer or like um, an embossing tool heat gun I have one but I've never tried that I bet it would work well or you could um, use like the steam from your iron oh <laughs> knocked everything else off my table that's all right okay both sides Awesome. And then these work really well for poking out the ends too. If you're using just fabric for this, it's not this hard. I just like to make everything difficult for myself. Okay. What did I do there? Might need to push it back in a little. Ow. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell there's like a little like threads. I'm just going to take and do that. That worked. All right. Um, you also, after you turn this, it is good to iron it down, but I am using waterproof canvas and I just, I really don't like ironing at all. Um, you cannot iron the back, but I honestly don't like ironing it at all. 
So I am not going to do that. I did kind of tear it a tiny bit with the hemostats, but it really, the little like frays go away. Uh, if you snipped your corners well enough, you won't get a pucker. Um, I usually do though. And actually these don't look bad. So I just finger press these, hand press. <laughs> I smooth them down as best as I possibly can and then I clip them back down to hold them in place because we're going to be top stitching and that'll hold it down well and I'm going to leave these clips on here until I finish my other two pieces and then I'll top stitch and it'll be kind of mushed down enough by then. This is also what I do with my zipper pockets and bags. I just, I don't like going over to my iron. Uh, I haven't noticed a difference. I don't think mine look worse than anyone else's. So, you know, whatever works for you, it works. Okay, so looks funny, but that's going to be held down there. Let me grab my pieces. Okay, and I'm going to set this one to the side. And we're going to sew our main pieces. Okay, so for these main pieces, we're sewing the sides and the bottom. You can leave a hole right here in your lining to turn the whole bag through at the end. Um, or you can completely sew both of them and then at the end when you turn the bag right side out through the top, you could close that up. I'm going to do the bottom of the lining and I'm going to do that right now before I forget. So again, I'm doing one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to make sure I don't knock this over. I wish you could see my view of all three kittens doing bad kitten things in my office. Okay. Oh, and I didn't leave it open because I got distracted. So, I'll be showing you how to do it the other way. See, improvising it works, so I should have left that open there. But, we can leave it open later and it'll be okay. Now we're going to do the exterior. And I didn't interface this, so on this machine, it did try to pucker up a little bit. It's okay. I just need there to give it a tug when I start. to box our corners now on both our exterior and lining. So you're going to, you could put your hand in here if that helps you. You're going to take, and I'm going to switch the clips that I'm using. Some are pretty glitter clips. Okay. So you're going to make sure that this seam and this seam are completely lined up. That's going to give you the best box corner result. And then I like to nest my seams where one's going one way, one's going the other. Put a clip in the middle and then make sure these are very lined up and flat and 
clip the sides. Oh my gosh, these kittens are cracking me up. <laughs> I'm going to miss the one when he goes, but that's what happens when you foster. Um, oh my god. <laughs> they were just on top of a whole bolt of felt and it fell down. <laughs> I need like a second camera. Oh my gosh. All right. Now the lining. Same thing. You want to like feel both seams like so that you know it's lined up. That sound was them running across my foot pedal. Luckily, they are not big enough to make the machine go. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. All right, now we're going to sew our corners. I'm going to do um, a one fourth inch seal allowance again. Um, on the lining, also, what I could have and should have done too is start at one fourth and gradually increase it so that it would fit together better. Um, but I did not remember to do that either. Again, very forgiving pattern. It will be okay. I promise. This is a great beginner pattern too. I'll teach you a couple basic skills. Like boxing corners if you've never done it. There's no hardware other than Velcro or if you want to use a snap all together great little so it makes great gifts and um it's just really fun and it's practical everyone can use it going to top stitch this piece. Again, we're only sewing the same size we sewed before. I'm going to increase my stitch length to 4.5. You could sew this close too if you want, so I'll just start here. Remember to get your needle going back up before you pivot. This pattern is also extremely domestic friendly depending on the materials you use. You should still be able to stitch through this even on a domestic. I've never used waterproof canvas on mine. Uh, on To be honest, I, I rarely use mine. I only use it when I need to zigzag stitch my steering wheel covers that I make. Otherwise, I have this for bag making, and then I have another Juki that I use for cat toys. All right, so I'm going to mark the centers. Um, I kind of did, but I'm going to do it again because I sewed it together now. Okay, so we have our top. We have our main, and to get the centers on that, I'm going to line up these 
side seams and just barely notch my centers. Same with my lining. And remember, we didn't leave the bottom open, so I have to leave a hole to birth it when I put everything together or we will have a problem. Okay, so you have your lining, your exterior, and your top. Now we have to put it all together. Um, you want to pay attention if you have so sometimes I'll take like a print and put it on the front that will show and I'll put the waterproof canvas on the back because the back is going to be up against your seat. You're not really going to see it, but because I put this name tag on here, I need this to be the top. Um, I have put it on wrong more times than I can like even mention because you want this to be facing the lining so that... When the whole bag is turned right side out, this is flipped up. I have, in my head, wanted it to be facing the exterior so many times. It just, it does not work. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to line this up and clip it in place. just so I know it's there and in place. Okay, so this side is going to be the back of our bag. It's going to be flipped up in the back. So I had a side I wanted to be the front of this. Can I remember which one it was? I don't think it matters now, actually. Let's see. That one's pretty centered. I'm not really sure. I think this one is centered more. So I want this to be the front of my bag. And I need it to be right side out because I have this wrong side out. And this is going to go inside. This is the front and this is the front. I'm going to find my notches and match them up. And then I'm going to match up my sides and I'm going to nest my seams again. Do that to both sides. Nest them. It helps them like they just sit together so nicely too. All right. And then we've got our center here. Just move my clip out of the way. And then what I like to do after I have my like centers is I like to just kind of stretch it and get it fit together and then I just go from there trying to line things up as best possible. They should fit together well as long as your seam allowances were right. Um, if they're off a tiny bit you can you can work with it. It is not the end of the world. Now we I'm gonna say it again because I am likely to forget again. I need an opening to turn this through. Um, what I like to do personally when I need um, to remember an opening is I'll take my clips and I will like double them in a spot. And to me, that tells me start and stop. It works for me. Um, that's what I do. All right. So now. Let's see, I'm going to need to start and stop where I told myself to. I'm going to do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for um, this part just to make sure everything is caught. And to give a little bit of something for the top stitch at the end to um, grab onto. This is where you can't see it. My um, 
top attachment pieces. I'm going to backstitch at the start and stop of it. It's also a less than one bobbin project, which is always nice. And you could sew most of it using up bobbins if you wanted to. You don't really need your color to be right until you're top stitching on the main piece and the top. So if you wanted to like batch sew, you could do that and sew all the main pieces with leftover bobbins. That is always nice. All right, so we're gonna reach in and pull everything. I didn't leave the biggest opening because um, it is a little bit harder to fold it over for your top stitch this way. Um, it does completely hide all your seams, so if we would have left the opening in the bottom, um, you would have like seen the little seam. Uh, but the smaller you can make the turning hole for this, uh, the better for when you go to top stitch and line it up. Alright, so I'm poking my corners out on here and then I'm gonna be flipping it back around. <laughs> Alright, I definitely want to make sure that my exterior corners look good. Okay. Now I'm going to push the lining into the exterior. Oh, this is cute! I love the plain black with this print. Okay, so I'm going to finger press this right here. And then we're going to go all around the top. And I'm going to clip it. I'm going to roll it too so the lining is just below the exterior. Okay, so here's our opening. I'm going to do that part at the absolute last. Okay. One more clip over here. Okay, so you've got your start and your stop points and you can kind of like pull on it and kind of like flatten it. And it'll kind of set itself down there. Here's a little thread from our back stitch. I'm gonna trim that. And now when we top stitch around, you won't even know that that was there. Like, it'll be completely hidden. Uh, sometimes I like to turn everything right side out and top stitch, but I don't really think I have to do that here. Um, if you wanna start and stop in a place that's kind of inconspicuous, you can do right here. Where the corner is I have done right here before and then I realized like when you're looking at it that's directly where you're looking so we're not gonna do that and we are at four and a half inch or four and a half for our stitch length not inches that would be a very long stitch okay so I'm gonna start before my seam and I'm going like just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch in. You want to be careful um, where your opening is when you're taking the clips out. And you can take your time when you're top stitching because um, that is you know, 
going to be seen the most. Okay, when you get to this piece, you can top stitch here. You also want to make sure that everything is laying flat here. And if I, I think I just might have said top stitch. I meant back stitch. Like you want to look down here also and make sure that the back is laying flat as well. It really stinks if you get done top stitching and you find out that you have to take that out. Also, depending on your material, it could leave marks or holes. So, just be real careful when you're doing your final top stitch. Alright, so we have our main bag done. Looking good. Now we just need to put our Velcro on. So, for the Velcro, you're going to want one piece on the top one piece on the bottom so that when it wraps around they go together if you put them both on the top or both on the bottom you're gonna have a problem all right so i like to just get it maybe like an eighth of an inch from my top stitching and i do apologize this is black on black on black so it might not be the easiest to see but we're just going to stitch around that go the kittens. Okay, now remember this was on the top. We're gonna flip everything over and we're gonna put this one on the bottom. Also there is just fur on everything in my house. It's okay. My business is called Demperium. <laughs> Okay, there's a cat on my pedal. <laughs> it's attacking my foot. <laughs> oh, goodness. My toe is being bitten. <laughs> Definitely make sure you're back stitching your starts and stops on these. Um, you do not want this to come off. All right. And that is it. These are, when they go around the seat, they will be like this and we are done. I will, um, take this out in my car and get some good pictures too. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and like the video. Thank you.